You join us where we left off last time, anchored just outside the River Helford and heading across to Falmouth to get some spares for the outboard. River, as you remember yesterday, it was um, blue skies, flat seas, no wind. Today I've woken up, we've got this lovely tailwind blowing now, currently wing on wing and heading towards Falmouth to try and find some spares. Having no telltale on my outboard made me realise that possibly the impeller had gone so the following day was spent stripping down the outboard and the gearbox to put the new impeller in after I tracked down the parts. Working on a boat can be incredibly messy. I found the use of these puppy pee pads are fantastic for using as a work surface as they're totally oil absorbent. This came in useful later on as I ended up spilling the gearbox but that's another story due to my mistakes. Yeah, so pump build, hold this shaft and slide this up. Do not pull this shaft out. Holding the shaft down, lifting the pump up. The reason I'm saying don't pull the shaft out is I pulled the shaft out, uh, reassembled the whole thing and found I had no gears. So yeah, the reason for that is as I pulled the shaft out, it dropped off the small worm gear inside. So I ended up having to take the gearbox out to re-put the worm gear on. Do not pull out the shaft. You can see here the bevel gear that came off when I pulled out the shaft. Lesson learned. It's never simple. A five minute job on a boat. Yeah, right. But that's now the worm gear engaged on the shaft. This shows the actual propeller shaft and the mechanism used for selecting in and out of gear. Another useful tool which I use a lot is this portable vice. Wonderful tool and the gearbox finally assembled with the water pump in place. Now, little trick I've just found is this piece of wire here. Go around that little copper tube there so it helps pull it up and hold it in location. But another really interesting thing I found out quite by accident is up here there's two holes here and if I pull this up I push a long pin in there it tends to hold that copper tube up a little bit so push a pin in there it'll help hold the copper tube up finally all reassembled and the dreaded clean up and tools away Okay, setting out for setting out for Dartmouth today. Um, about a 50 mile journey, so around about 10 hours. A few things I always do when I start my engine up. I always check I've got the correct voltage around 13.8 volts, so I know the alternator's working. I also like to check I've got oil pressure and make sure I've got plenty of fuel and that my water temperature is okay as well as checking the outlet valve that you've got water coming out of the exhaust. Get into this habit as well as a pre-engine check of fan belt, water in your radiator and oil. You don't get many bargains in sailing but this was something like £12 off one of those Chinese websites and basically no, no talking I'm on a video. This is a great bargain, around about £12 off those Chinese websites. It connects to a relay at the front. Effectively, it gives me a remote control for my anchor. This is battery powered, but it is so useful when you're single-handed. Highly recommend this. Great tool. Highly recommend it for single-handed.
Leaving the mouth of the river fell proved very difficult. I had a wind right on the nose and quite some waves bashing. It was very hard to penetrate out and eventually get myself onto a beam breach. Even our poor dog Hero was having a hard time standing up in this weather. Two reefs in each sail and a 20 knot beam reach plugging along. Neil absolutely loves this kind of sailing. I would have loved to have brought Hero back home with me on the aeroplane. Sadly, they don't let dogs into Exeter Airport. Can you believe it? Since it was a bit of a long crossing, I decided to use the trusty Hydrovein. The sail across was rather lumpy and unpleasant, so I decided to cut into Foy for the night, have a rest on the smooth flat waters. Just love this following sea and surfing into the uh, mouth. The first job of the day is to take Hero for a nice long walk along the coastal path. As you enter Foy, this little cove is on your port side. People are playing on the beach and enjoying a swim, even though the weather is rather overcast. This is a lovely little private beach. This building, along with its wall, was built in 1855 and it's still standing just as strong and proud. They did things properly back then. just love these little Cornish pathways through the woods. I can smell wild garlic here. Tell you what, having a dog is a great excuse for going for a walk. And I've been doing a lot of walking lately. Absolutely amazing amount of walking all down to the dog. I might moan at him when he's on the boat, chewing things up, but just loving the amount of walking I'm doing at the moment. Always seems to be fantastic light in Cornwall. Sea has calmed down so I can head out again tomorrow and continue on the journey. How cool is that? Only in Cornwall. Thawi book swap. Wonderful. Let's have a look what's inside. Come on here. Finally back on to the River X to find my morning.